I'm Charlie Frost, and on today's episode of the 24MX Workshop, I'm gonna show you how to replace the rear and front brake pads on the bike. Stay tuned. On today's episode on 24MX Workshop, I'll be showing you how to replace your brake pads. A very crucial, but very simple job. So I will show you now how to replace rear pads. We will be using the 20 brake pads, as you can see here. Like I said, very simple job, but when done properly, it uh, plays a big part in the racing side of things. So first we will need socket 32 mil for motocross bikes also we'll need a set of long no pliers to remove the pins from the brake pin so first and foremost make sure the bike is secure on the stand having the rear wheel raised off the floor many ways of doing this my personal preference of doing this is the brake pads are obviously in contact with the disc at the moment. So I push my knee against the rear caliper like so. Releasing the pressure on the caliper itself. So it opens up the brake pads. So when removing and replacing the rear wheel, it makes it a lot easier and less stress trying to put the back wheel into place. So firstly, 32 mil socket. We're gonna slacken the rear wheel off. like so removing the wheel nuts and also the spacer and then pushing with my thumb the rear spindle back through the wheel to the other side and then on this side as you can see we'll take the chain off of the sprocket taking the slack off and then holding the wheel with my right hand removing the spindle like so and then we'll put the wheel to one side for now as you can see obviously the spindle is greased up but also it does collect all the dirt so i'll give that a quick clean using the a9 racing oils all-in-one spray keeping your metal is nice and clean is a big part of it so we want to make sure we get as much of the grease off as possible and as you can see it collects all the dirt up top it just makes it a lot easier when putting the back wheel in and also the rear spindle so we get all the rubbish and grit off of the spindle should we say obviously the grease as well does attract all the dirt i personally don't use grease i just use spray because like i said if you cape the spindle in grease, it attracts more dirt, more grit, and then it just makes the wheel a lot stiffer to come out. So I give that a nice clean off there, like so. So personally, I put the spindle in the foot peg, so you don't lose it. Next, get your set of long nose pliers, and you've got two little brake pins, little clips on the brake pin, should we say. So remove them, one at a time, like so. And then very simple, I just hold the brake pads with one thumb, push the pin through with the other, and it, they do get quite dry. So same again, we'll give that a bit of lubrication before we put it back in. And then brake pads to drop out, like so. I just give it a little check around inside the caliper, making sure there's no dirt or no grit inside of there, checking that the clip the brake pad clip up top is still intact. And then straightforward, new brake pads. I do it one at a time, starting from the left. So if I give this a quick lube, always best to use lube. Like so. And then yeah, start from the left-hand side with the left brake pad. That way, when you put the brake, brake pad in, and the pin in first, it holds it in place. So that brake pad is now secure and then fitting the right hand brake pad like so. Push the pin right through 
making sure both pads are still in place. Push it right through till it comes out the other side. Get your two clips. I normally put the, the holes up on top. So one clip goes in nice and easy. Same again with the other clip back over here. So I can see it. Like so. And then making sure both pads are sat in the carrier properly. Brake pads have now been removed and replaced. So very straightforward. Put the wheel back in. So like I said, with the spindle, it's now nice and clean. I'll get a bit of lubrication using the all-in-one spray. You don't want to cape it in spray, but just give it a nice texture to it. So it's nice and smooth moving. So it goes in the wheel easier. As you can see, now I've got quite a lot of space between the pads. It makes it a lot easier for the wheel to go in. If I hadn't have pushed against the caliper, the brake pads would have still been tight and it makes it really hard to get your disc back in between the pads. So because I've done that now, once I slide the wheel into place, like so, easy as that. Spindle back through, give it a nice tap, and then chain back on, spin it round, and then pulling the wheel back so the adjusters go into place, like that. And then we use your spacer or adjuster, whichever you want to call it, back on, push the wheel forward, wheel nut, back on like so. And the first thing I do after doing that, I always pump the rear brake because a lot of people change their rear pads, forget to pump the brake on, go to ride off, go to push their foot on the back brake, and then nothing happens and they end up crashing. Or if they do a wheelie and then they end up crashing. So I always pump the back brake up first. And then one last little tip, I always grab a spanner. Any size, doesn't really matter. And like so, what I'll do then, using a spanner like so, I'll put it into the sprocket, spin the wheel backwards. That way, that's pulling the wheel forward into the adjusters. So I know that when I tighten the wheel up, the wheel is back forward like it, where it should go. So with the spanner there, get your socket on the wheel nut. Make sure that's nice and tight. Like that. Push the wheel forward, remove the spanner, and there you have it. So now we've done the rear brake pads. I will show you now to the front pads. Very similar technique. Um, you, can, you can sort of replace the pads without having to remove the wheels, but I personally do, just so I know the pads are sat in place properly. So I'll spin this round now. So with the front brake pads, there's two different ways of doing it. You can either remove the caliper itself, or you can remove the front wheel. With removing the caliper, you can just take these two 10 mil bolts off, slide the caliper off and do the pads that way. Or I'll show you the way I do it and I'll remove the front wheel and then the caliper stays in place and then I can do the pads that way. So I'll show you the way that I do it. So for that, we'll need a 10 mil and 14 mil, 17 mil, sorry. So the first step will be to remove the front wheel. We have four 10 mil bolts here on each fork to this side, which hold the, the spindle in place. So firstly, we'll slacken off these two 10 mils. What that does, by slackening off these two 10 mil bolts, it releases the wheel spindle nut, which then you can remove because that wheel spindle nut now wouldn't undo if I don't undo these two, because it's so tight. So we'll slacken off these two 10 mils first. Now you don't want to undo them all the way. You just want to slacken them off enough so that you've got movement in order to remove the wheel nut. So now swap in to a 17 mil. Simply slacken off the wheel nut like so. Take that out completely because you want to take the spindle out. Then going back to the 10 mil, 
We're gonna slacken these two off. Same again, not all the way out. Just enough to give yourself movement so it doesn't pinch the spindle because these two 10 mils are pinching that spindle in place. So what we want to do is slacken these off enough so that now that spindle will pull itself out like so. Pulling the spindle out, same again. Remove the front wheel. As you can see again, it's been greased up, obviously got a bit of dirt on it. So I'll give that a clean up. Get rid of all that excess grease and dirt. And again, using the all-in-one spray, give it a nice bit of lubrication, not too much. Just enough to put back in. Now the next step is to remove the brake pads. Same again, very straightforward, very simple. As you can see, it's situated on the caliper. You've got a brake clip for the brake pin. Same again on the back. So we'll get along those pliers. Same as the rear, pull out the clip on the front. And the second one around here. Hold the brake pads with firm, push the pin back through. Same again, it's all dry from being washed. And then simply slide the front pads out like so. As you can see, it's quite clean in here. There's no dirt or any excess grease in there, which is good. Just checking that the clip itself is still in place. Also the clip up here, so that's all good and intact. So get the new pads now, 20 front pads like so. And come back over to the caliper. Now, like I said on the rear caliper, you can push your knee against the caliper to release the pressure, or I'll show the other way I do it, which is using a flat headed screwdriver. So what I'll do first is I'll now insert the new pads. So giving that brake pin a bit of lube, first brake pad to go in this side, same again, slide it into place, brake pin, push it through. Now held in place, it won't fall out. Second pad, slide that one in like so, making sure it's clipped in at the top, hence why this clip is here. Push the pin right through to the other side, making sure that it's all the way through. So that's nice and flush there. Spin that around that way. Clips, very important, making sure that they're facing backwards. So, I personally put the pin going that way because when you're going forward, obviously the everything will be coming this way, branches, rocks. If you put that clip in that way, it's quite easy for the pin to get, uh, the clip to get knocked out. So I put the, the clip in this way, so anything that's gonna hit it won't knock the pin out of place. And then the other clip goes down, only it has one way, gonna go one way, in that way, like so. So both clips are back in, the pin is through, and this is the next step I was gonna say. As you can see, the pads are quite tight because obviously I haven't pushed the caliper with my knee, hence why it's obviously not much space. So get yourself a flathead screwdriver, place it in between the pads and just give it a nice twist like so, bottom and top. As you can see now, it's created a much bigger gap for which where the disc will slide into when the front wheel goes back in. So now both, Tops of the pads are in place. And we've got a nice bit of space for the disc to slide into. So we'll now put the front wheel back in. We're gonna line both forks up, making it easier to put the front wheel in. Get the old pads out of the way. So we've already sprayed up the front spindle. So that's ready to go in. I've put it on a rag, so any dirt or grit that's on the floor won't get stuck to it when I slide it back through. Reason being, when you slide the spindle through, any grit or dirt will won't help it slide through the bottom of the forks easily. So if you give it a nice good clean, give the bottom of the forks a nice wipe out, making sure that's nice and flush through there, just makes it a lot easier to put the wheel in. Slide it into the pads, like so. Grabbing your spindle, and then simply slide it through, like so. As I, can, as I said, nice and easy, because there's no grit or dirt on the spindle back in place like so now this is very important this next part because some people forget to do this 
what you want to do is make sure that the spindle is all the way through as far as it will go on this side of the fork. Firstly, I'll, I'll just tighten up one of these 10 mil bolts because what that will do is that now, that spindle is now tight. So when I do up the wheel nut the other side, that spindle is now tight in place and it won't move. So we'll swap that back to a 17 mil socket. Get your, your wheel nut, give it a bit of a, a bit of a spray off. As you can see, it's got a lot of dirt and stuff on it. Any dirt we can remove helps in the future, just to keep it nice and clean and nice and freely moving. Get rid of that. So wheel nut into place like so. Do it finger tight for the first part. So now that that 10 mil bolt is tight, that wheel spindle is tight, meaning when I tighten this wheel nut up, that spindle is now nice and tight, which means that wheel nut is nice and tight. So that's now tightened up back to a 10 mil. This is the important part. So now I'm gonna slacken off that 10 mil bolt because a lot of people would just now tighten up all the 10 mil bolts and leave it. But what's important is if you don't slacken off that 10 mil bolt, the forks won't realign straight because that fork now technically is pulled in. So now if I slacken off that 10 mil bolt, this fork will move slightly, which means the forks will then be straight. So if I slacken off this 10 mil, like so. And then like that, the, wheel, the forks will now be straight because sometimes the forks will be pulled in a little bit because I've tightened the bolts up. So now from left to right, I'm gonna tighten the bolts up one by one. Like so, making sure they're nice and tight. Same again with these two on this side. So now all four bolts are nice and tight along with the wheel nut. And also as a precaution, I always just check the caliper bolts just to make sure they're nice and tight when doing so. As you can see, I've got a bit of turn out of that one. Same again with that one. And then lastly, not forgetting, spin the front wheel, pump the brake up, making sure it's nice and firm. And that's how you change the front brake pads. So I hope you enjoyed this video on showing you how to replace the front and rear brake pads. All the products can be found on the 24MX website. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. I'll see you on the next one.